Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Abraham um, from the Bible. Now, before we go into the biography of Abraham, the life of Abraham, uh, what the Bible tell us about, uh, tells us about the life of Abraham, um, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment uh, so that the channel can continue to grow. Um, so the life of Abraham, it, it's, it's very, very important. Uh, there's a lot of things that happen uh, within the life of Abraham. Um, the first thing we have to understand is that um, um, Abraham was a very old man when God called him. And that's something that's very interesting about the Bible. Um, God, he calls people at different times. He uses people at different times. Sometimes he call, uh, calls, you know, he calls people when they're not even born yet. Uh, in, in, in the story of Samuel, for example, um, you know, Hannah wanted a child. And before Samuel was even born, um, God had a call on his life uh, for Samuel to serve God. Um, and so Samuel wasn't even born. Uh, he wasn't even in his mother's uh, womb yet. And there was already a call on his life. And Abraham, he was actually much older. He was 75 years old. Uh, when God called him to leave his homeland. And, and that's where the story of Abraham begins. Um, he's 75 years old and, and God calls him to leave his home. And God, you know, speaks to Abraham or communicates to Abraham. We're not given the specific details um, on how God first speaks to Abraham. But we're just told that God spoke to Abraham um, and said, well, leave your homeland. Leave, leave everything behind. You know, leave your, your, your family, your friends, your town, you know, wherever, you know, your people, leave them. Uh, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to bring you to this new land, this new place, uh, and I'm going to give it to you as an inheritance. Um, now, uh, Abraham, at this time, his name was Abram, um, which means exalted father. Uh, that was his name. Later, God changes it to Abraham. Uh, which is, you know, father of, of nations, father of, of many, father of, um, you know, of, of men um, and, and of kings. And, and God even tells him that, um, you know, that you'll be the father of kings, of, of nations, of men, of, of peoples. Um, and that's what Abraham is. He's the father of is the Israelites. He's the father of, you know, Jewish people. Um, he's the father of God's, you know, God's work on earth. Um, you know, through him, God brought about um, Jesus Christ through his line, through his blood. Um, it, it's it's mind boggling to think that, you know, this man on earth, God just selected him out of, you know, out of all the inhabitants of the earth. God just selected Abraham and God decided to make a covenant with Abraham. And so it's, it's you know, it's very specific, very special. Um, and Abraham is, is someone set apart, just like Noah. Think about Noah. Noah was someone set apart um, that God just chose this one man to, to save the human race. And in the case of Noah, in the case of Abraham, God just chose Abraham to, well, to make him the father of his people. Um, because we know that the Israelites are God's people. It's God's nation. Um, the 12 tribes of Israel. They're all, they, all, this all begins with Abraham. Think about, uh, you, know, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God even calls himself the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then from Jacob, we get the 12 sons, the 12 tribes. And from the 12 tribes, from Judah, we get Jesus. Uh, the line of Judah is Jesus, and so from Jesus we get the crucifixion. From crucifixion, we get all man can be saved. It's it's quite beautiful story, and it, again, it all begins with Abraham. Um, God selects Abraham, you know, after Noah, after people had multiplied on the face of the earth. Um, it, there come, it, it came about a time, you know, when when people had multiplied against, the, uh, you know, all over the earth that God selected Abram and turned him into Abraham and told him, you're going to be the father of nations, the father, um, you know, of many people. 
And, you know, Abraham, Abraham, Abram was an old man, 75. And so um, Abraham, um, Sarah, um, which, you know, her name is, is changed to Sarah uh, later in, in the story. But God does change their name. So Sarah, um, Sarah Abraham, um, Lot, um, and his wife, um, they all were together. So pretty much um, Abraham takes his wife. Lot comes along. Lot is the nephew of Abraham. And, um, you know, Abraham takes him along. Uh, and they pretty much leave their homeland. And they set off for um, Canaan. Um, and, uh, there are people who are living in Canaan at this time and they're not godly people. They're not God's people. And God tells Abraham, I'm going to give you all the land that you see, um, uh, all the whole land of, of Israel, uh, the, all the entire land of Canaan, um, is for Abraham. And God says, you know, this is the, the land of milk and honey, um, that, that later when the Israelites are coming out of Egypt, you know, God tells the Israelites, I'm going to bring you to a land of milk and honey. Um, so, you know, a land of abundance, a land of prosperity. So when when God calls Abraham from his home, uh, Abraham goes to the land of Canaan. It, it's not easy. Um, he had some some, you know, some finances, some goods, but he wasn't uh, an extremely rich man. But throughout all of his um, um, journeys, adventures um, from going from kingdom to kingdom, from Egypt um, dealing with different rulers and kings, uh, God makes Abraham a very rich man. Now, Sarah was a very beautiful woman. Uh, and in, in many different places where Abraham goes with Sarah, um, they, they take Sarah as, you know, you know, she's a very gorgeous, beautiful woman. Many kings uh, wanted to take her uh, as their wives, but God always stood up for Abraham. So that, that's an occurring story uh, or an occurring line of story. Within the story of Abraham, where there's several points where these these rulers of power wanted to take Sarah as their um, wife, as you know, for them, uh, but God steps in. God even steps into a dream and, and tells uh, a ruler, you know, uh, you can't take this woman; she's not yours. That's the wife you know, of Abraham, um, because you know, whenever Abraham finds a new king or he's in a new place, he tells Sarah, "Listen, just tell him that you're my sister." And you're not my wife so that they don't kill me. And, and that is, you know, partially true that, you know, Abraham uh, and Sarah, they are sister. They are sister and brother, brother and sister. Uh, that is a truth um, because, you know, you know, their parents, they have the same uh, father, but not the same mother. Um, so that that's a truth within the Bible. Um, so the story goes on. Um, you know, Abraham, throughout his journey, he, he, his flock grows, um, his, uh, his, his cattle grows. Lot, Lot, Lot's not a child. Lot, Lot is a grown man. He has a wife. Uh, his stock grows, his, his, um, livestock grows. Um, and, and they become very wealthy. They, 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 they start to have a, a, you know, a lot of money, a lot of prosperity throughout their, um, journeys. Um, and, and, and God tells Abraham, um, you know, he brings him outside during one night. He tells, he shows him the, the stars, all the stars in the sky. And he tells Abraham, you know, I'm going to make you have you know, as many kids as you see in the skies, you know, as numerous as the stars, you know, um, God tells Abraham that he's going to have, you know, all the kids, you know, as many as the sand on the seashore, you know, you're going to have all these types of kids, um, and Abraham, you know, he's a very old man and Sarah is a, is a very old woman. Um, and, you know, it's kind of unbelievable that this could even happen because, you know, Sarah's not a, she's not a, a young woman anymore. Um, but God tells Abraham, you know, even though, you know, your wife's old, I'm still going to give you a child by her, you know, even though that she's not a, a um, you know, a, a young woman in her 20s. God made it happen, and because Sarah give, gives birth to to, to Isaac uh, when she's when she was in her nineties, um, so that that's something that's very interesting. Now uh, there there were some difficult, some rocky moments where Abraham um, his faith was 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 not where it was supposed to be in terms of Hagar, because there, there came a point of frustration where Sarah tells Abraham, "Listen, take Hagar, my handmaiden." And, you know, Sarah gives um, Hagar as a, you know, as a woman to wife. 
Um, so Abraham goes in and sleeps with, uh, with Hagar. And uh, Abraham's firstborn by Hagar was Ishmael. Um, and um, Ishmael was born. And, um, you know, they had to be sent away because, um, well, God, you know, God didn't like what happened because God told Abraham that, that Sarah was going to give you a child uh, because of their, you know, their unbelief or, or they, they got frustrated. They tried to do it by their own way, by the human way, the fleshy way, and it didn't work out. God was like, no, 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 this is not what I said. Uh, you know, have faith in what I said. Um, and, that, and that's one of the things that we get from the story of Abraham is that, you, we, you know, you have to believe in what God says and he's always going to deliver because there's nothing too great for that, that, you know, for God. There's nothing that God can't do. Um, God can do whatever he wants, when he wants. He can do anything. There's nothing uh, that's impossible for God to do. Um, so, you know, Hagar was giving um, Sarah, you know, some attitude we can say, um, or mistreating uh, um, Sarah because, you know, um, Hagar gave Abraham a, a son, um, Ishmael, uh, but, um, you know, Sarah had no son, no heir. Uh, and so Abraham put Hagar into Sarah's hand. Sarah was mistreating Hagar. Um, and, um, and, you know, God stepped in the whole issue uh, and God promised and blessed um, Ishmael and told Hagar that, you know, um, Ishmael would be a great man and, and he would his descendants would be numerous and plentiful um, but but Hagar and Ishmael they do get sent away um, within within Islam a lot of people believe that Ishmael is the father of Islam um, some scholars do believe that uh, but um, uh, Ishmael is the son of Abraham um, some people believe that his descendants, um, they, they started Islam or that's, that's where the father or Ishmael is the father of Islam. Uh, but the Bible doesn't go into all of that. Um, that's just a common theory, a common, um, um belief that's out there. Uh, but all that we know is that Ishmael was blessed by God, um, and, um, they were sent away. Um, but the covenant, the covenant was kept between Abraham and Sarah. And God gave um, Abraham a son by, by Sarah, by the name of Isaac. And um, um, Isaac was Abraham's heir. Um, if it wasn't for Isaac, you know, somebody, somebody from his household, some servant, somebody that he, well, was named his heir, um, all of his wealth, all of his money would have probably gone to somebody in his house. Um, that's even the, the argument that um, um, Abraham um, used uh, when he was talking to God uh, about, um, you know, uh, that he had no heir. Um, so that's something that, 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 that definitely, uh, you know, we should keep in mind. Um, so um, the story goes on uh, with, um, with Abraham. Um, that when it came to a point where Abraham and Lot, they couldn't stay together anymore. And Abraham and Lot, they had to go their separate ways. Uh, and basically what happened in that point, um, um, Lot pretty much decided to go uh, closer or in the plains where Sodom and Gomorrah were. And he pretty much went to go dwell with them. And Abraham was went towards the mountains and he was his dwelling was in the mountains. Uh, and so one day uh, the Lord and, and two angels came and they sat down. They ate with Abraham. Um, and, um, after this feast, after they ate together, uh, well, the, the two angels were sent to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah were, were just so horrific, so, so horrible, uh, that, um, well, that the judge, their judgment, um, came. Um, and so, um, the two angels went into Sodom and Gomorrah, um, they basically, the men said, the men of Sodom and Gomorrah said they wanted to have sex with the angels. Uh, you know, the Bible sometimes it uses the word to know. To know means to, to sleep with, to have sex with. And the men, they were getting violent. Um, this is one thing that's, that's always kind of like disturbing in the story. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah is that the, the men of Sodom and Gomorrah, they saw these, these, these angels, these, they're, they're men. Of course, they're angels. They look, they look amazing. Um, you know, they're, they're, 
they're awestrucking. They're angels. They look amazing. And so the men, they're like, well, we want to, to have sex with them. Uh, and, you know, Lot had the angels. Lot, you know, he convinced the angels to come into his house and he took care of them. You know, uh, you know he, he received them as, as his guests. But the men of, of the city, they were like, we want to sleep with, um, with the angels. And Lot was like, you know, I, we, I have two daughters. They're, they're virgins. They haven't been touched by a man. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give them to you. You do whatever you wish with them. So Lot was like, you know, it's very, you know, dark. But Lot was like, you know, if you want someone to have sex with, you know, I, I'll give you my daughters. Have sex with them and, and spare these two men. But the men of the city, like, they don't want anything to do with his daughters or to have sex with them. They just want the angels. They want to have sex with the angels. And um, they got violent, you know. They, they, they got violent, and they were beating against the door. Uh, and they even threaded, like, they, 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 they used a threat against Lot. They were like, you know, you're, you're a stranger among us. You know, we'll treat you worse if you don't get out of our way. And so the angels, they, they blinded the man when they were beating against the door. And, um, and um, you know, things, got, things were just horrible. And the angels told Lot uh, to, to get out of the city uh, because, you know, the, the sin was, was wroth. The sin was raw. The sin, it, it just reached out into the heavens. Like God was, God was like, you know, his wrath was filled. His cup of wrath was filled for Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, and so the angels gave him Lot and his daughters um, time. Lot was, you know, um, Lot's daughters, they were betrothed. They were going to get married to these two men in the city. Uh, but when Lot told them, let's go, let's get out, the men thought that Lot was joking. Um, and so Lot took his daughters and his wife and they got out of the city. Um, and, um, and then, you know, fire and brimstone came down and devoured and, and burned, you know, fire and brimstone. It's like an atomic bomb and, um, everything in the city just burnt down to the ground. It was like a fiery furnace. The Bible tells us the, the city burned like a fiery furnace. Even Abraham, when he, when he woke up and he was looking down in the plains, it was a fiery furnace. That's how bad it was. Um, and so, um, you know, that, that's the story of Lot. And then later, you know, the, the Lot's daughters, they, they had no husbands in this cave. They, they made their father drink. Uh, he was drunk. He was knocked out, you know, pretty much unconscious. And he didn't know when his daughters came in or out. And, you know, they had children uh, by their father, um, they, they, you know, they slept with their father and they had children by their father. Um, and, and that came, you know, with a curse of, of its own, you know, that they, they, their children fought the, the daughters, their children, you know, pretty much went to war when they became nations. And so, um, you know, very dark stuff there. Um, but the story goes on and when it go, um, goes back to Abraham, Abraham, you know, he lived a very long life after he had his son Isaac. Isaac grew up. Um, God tested Abraham. And next is the when, when God tests Abraham, um, he makes Abraham pretty much. Um, well, he tells Abraham, you're going to go sacrifice your son, your only son, um, gotten by Sarah. Um, I want you to sacrifice him. Now, Abraham is a man of faith. He believes in God. He's, he's, he's given everything up for God. He left his home, left his family land, left everything. He's following God who's telling him, you know, I'm going to make something great out of you. I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Uh, I'm going to, to make your descendants as numerous as the stars. And Abraham believed in God. He believed he trusted God. Uh, even when, um, you know, a lot was kidnapped and, you know, all of Lot's uh, uh, belongings uh, and, and Abraham had to go to war for Lot and, and you know, to rescue Lot. Um, Abraham trusted in God and God was with Abraham. Um, and, and even, you know, the Sodom and Gomorrah, the king and, and the, the king of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, those kings, they try to make covenants. Uh, and they tried to make deals. They tried to pay Abraham or, or try to get close to him. But Abraham always found a way to say, you know, I don't want anything from you. 
you know, I just rely upon God. So Abraham always trust, um, you know, in everything he trusts God. Um, when, when Abraham came to the point of um, sacrificing Isaac, you know, he had no sacrifice. He brought his son as God instructed him. And he was going to sacrifice Isaac. He had the knife in the air. He was prepared and ready to sacrifice Isaac. Uh, but when God saw Abraham's heart, that there was nothing that did, that Abraham held from God. You know, God told Abraham, don't do it. Stop. Don't do it. Um, and, and God provided a sacrifice. And, and so God provided a sacrifice for Abraham. He did not have to sacrifice Isaac. Um, and, and, and God said, surely, because, you know, I know that you trust me. I know that you believe in me. I know that your faith is in me. I know that you are a man that, that you know, that's after my own heart, basically. You know, Abraham was a man true to his beliefs. He believed in God. He trusted God. Uh, he was not going to let God go. Um, and so God did exactly what he promised Abraham, um, you know, you know Abraham, his descendants became as numerous as the stars, the 12 tribes of Israel. And you, you might say, well, 12 tribes of Abraham, what, what is that? A couple million? Well, what is that? Yeah. Is that as numerous as the stars? Well, think about it this way. Um, it's not just the physical children of Israel. We're talking about Jesus Christ um, came from Judah, right? So, you know. Jesus is Jewish. Abraham, the father of Isaac, the Isaac, the father of Jacob, Jacob, the father of, of Israel, well, the father of the 12th tribe of Israel, and, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Um, and then from the 12th tribe of Israel, uh, later you get Jesus who comes out of Judah, and Judah is the sacrifice, dying on the cross to save all of humanity. And so... When you think about it that way, the 12 tribes, Jesus Christ, saving all of humanity, all of that is, is children of Abraham. So that's quite mind-blowing. Um, so all the you know Gentiles, the Jewish Gentiles, you know, uh, people, again, people who are Jewish, people who are not Jewish, everybody who believes in Jesus Christ, uh, who are born in, again into God's family, that all starts with Abraham. So that's where you get your children will be as numerous as the stars. That's where you get all of that. Um, and so it's a very, very beautiful story of how you get saved, of how you go to heaven, of how we go to heaven, and how uh, God crucified his son on the cross for us. Um, and so going back to the story of Abraham, though, um, you know, Sarah dies. Abraham buys a cave from the Hittites. Uh, and he buries Sarah. Sarah dies at 127 years old. Uh, Abraham dies at 175 years old. I mean, Abraham was not playing around. You know, he, he lived his life. Um, and, and after Sarah, he actually married an, marries another woman, uh, Keturah. And uh, he has sons and daughters, which is like mind-blowing because like we, we don't know anything about that but um yeah he has other sons and daughters so hagar sarah keturah um, abraham had lots of children um but we know that god worked his covenant through isaac so when we, if we really think about it abraham has children all over the earth because hagar ishmael had lots you know he, he was the father of kings uh, so Ishmael's descendants could be anywhere on the earth. And Keturah, with her children, their descendants could be anywhere on the earth. And Ishmael, um, and then Isaac, with the 12 tribes, you know, he's, he's the father of, of Jacob, which is um, Israel, and then the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, so, yeah, there's really no counting. And then also we have what I just explained with Jesus saving, you know, all of humanity. So really, the children of Abraham are, on, you can't count them. You don't know where it ends because he had lots of children with, with well, with many different women. And um, yeah, his, his children are as numerous as the stars. So God kept his word. That That's mind-boggling. That is definitely mind-boggling. Um, so... 
So yeah, Sarah dies uh, 127. Abraham dies at, at 175. Uh, and, and he bought a cave from the Hittites. And uh, he was buried, you know, Sarah was buried in the cave. And, and Abraham was buried in the cave. Um, you know, he, he purchased the cave from the Hittites and everything. And um, before Abraham died, though, he, he made one of his, um, his servants, his, his steward, um, get a wife for Isaac um, back, you know, in his homeland and, um, you know, from his family. And um, Isaac's wife was Rebecca. And, um, you know, Rebecca and Isaac, they met and uh, they got married. And um, pretty much, yeah, that's that's Abraham's story, um, because this then the the bible goes on to isaac and his story so the story of abraham or the biography of abraham is that you know he was born after the time of noah uh, there was a a time where of of of, of you know multiplying and the earth people having lots of kids you know people refilled the planet then god calls abraham uh abraham you know 75 years old he gets called from his homeland god tells him you're going to go to the land of canaan um uh, and abraham goes there he was abram he becomes abraham sarah sarah sarai becomes sarah um so their names are changed um and then um you know abraham god promises him that he'll have lots of children uh and again these are old people god uses old people to to make his covenant you know sarah is 90 years old and, and abraham is is a very old so in their old age, they 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 have a son and and Isaac, and God keeps his promises. Um, he gives um, Abraham his son, uh, and later Israel becomes the for the descendants of Abraham. Um, so God keeps all the promises that He made to Abraham. But it all starts with Abraham. That's why Abraham's story is so beautiful and so wonderful. Is that this is a man that God calls. You know, an old man, 75 years old, even though, you know, at this time people were living way past 100, you know, 120, 130, 140. Uh, but um, 175, that was, it was pretty high. Um, he takes this man and uh, 100 years after he calls this man, uh, God uses Abraham to do uh, great works. Um, God tests his faith. Um, God creates a covenant with him. God keeps his covenant. God tests him by asking him to, to um, sacrifice his son. Uh, and, um, you know, Abraham stays true and, and trusts God no matter what happened. God made him very rich and very prosperous. Uh, and, um, you know, there's the whole thing with Hagar. Uh, that, that was a, a you know, tough time there. Uh, but God still kept his word and gave him a, a child by Sarah. And uh, he died, leaving all of his wealth and everything in the in the hands of Isaac. Um, now, keep in mind that, um, you know, God didn't just take everybody off the land of Canaan and give it to Abraham while he was alive. Keep that in mind, because at that time, you know, Abraham just had a couple of servants. He had, you know, a good number of servants, his wife and his one son. I mean, God wasn't going to send Abraham into war like that. But... Years later, after Isaac and then Jacob comes along, we go into Egypt. The people of Israel, they multiply and multiply into thousands and thousands and thousands and millions. Then they go back to the land of Canaan and kill all the sinful and, and horrific people. And, and again, I mean, some people might say, but well, well, isn't that what, well, what, isn't there a problem with that? You know, they're killing a bunch of people that are already on the land. But the thing about it this way. The, the Canaanites and, and the people that were in Canaan, the people that lived in this land, these people were unholy. Uh, these people were 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 not men and women of God. You know, the Canaanites, um, uh, the, the people of the plain, uh, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, these were people that were practicing sodomy. Uh, these were people that were practicing incest. Um, in, in this ancient world, you know, it was very common because in the Bible, when you read, you know, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, uh, and, and, you know, the book of the five, the first five books of the Bible. So you go from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy 
uh, those three books, um, those three books, it tells you all of the crazy and, and um, just crazy sins that people are committing. Like, for example, you know, God writes in the Bible, you know, uh, a man cannot marry his mother or have sex with his mother. The Canaanites and the people in the plain, they were doing things like that. They were, you know, sleeping with their sisters, sleeping with their mothers. Uh, that was very common in the ancient world, especially in the Roman world. Um, think about you know, um, um, ancient Roman rulers it's, 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 um, or Egyptian rulers uh, like King Tut even, you know. The, the royal families, brothers were marrying sisters Brothers were marrying, you know, sons were marrying their mothers or incest was very common in the ancient world. And it's it's an abomination to God. And it's an abomination, period, not just to God, but it's an abomination, period, that you had all these types of families keeping it all in the family uh, and, and having multiple types of children with birth defects and all these types of things. Uh, and be, because if God had to literally tell the Israelites you cannot take your mother and have sex with her. You cannot take your sister and have sex with her. You cannot take your aunt. You cannot take your aunt's daughter. You cannot, like, you know, your your father cannot take your sister. Your, I, I know this sounds obvious, but in the ancient world, in Egypt, in, 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 in the ancient Roman world, in, in, in all these places, um, th there were no boundaries. There were no boundaries between family members. There were no boundaries between strangers. Um, people were, were practicing sexual acts that were abominations. Um, and you had a lot of messed up people. Um, and so God wrote, wrote down these rules and said, no incest. Because, well, God is always right. And we know the results of incest. The result of incest is monstrosity. It's like it creates horrible human beings. I mean, I mean... The children of people who commit incest are, are just, I mean, it's misery. And if you go on for generation after generation, I mean, you'll create a maniac uh, and, and all types of birth defects. I mean, I'm not going to go too far into it, but but all the sins that God tells people to, to, to go away from, sooner or later, you'll you find the truth of why it's a sin. Um, that's why you should just believe God in the first place, because if you follow the line and you don't listen and you follow the sin, you're going to reach a point. You're going to reach the bottom of the barrel when you realize how horrific sin is and what it ultimately leads to. And it ultimately leads to destruction. And it's never, never good for you. So at first it might seem simple, harmless, uh, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But in the end, when you reach that, that wall, when you reach the bottom of the barrel, you understand how deeply horrific and, and unforgiving and destroying sin is. No matter what sin it is, if God said it's a sin, it is a sin. Uh, but redemption or, or the redemption of humankind, the, the redeeming of human beings, uh, you know, entirely, you know, for, you know, entirely, like taking away every blemish. It begins with Abraham and his descendants and Israel and Jesus, because before this, to to be forgiven of a sin, you had to sacrifice a goat, a, a, a calf, a dove. You know, you had to sacrifice some type of animal. There had to be some death, some bloodshed. But through Abraham, we, we get Isaac, we get Jacob, we get the 12 tribes, we get Jesus Christ, who wipes every sin away, every single blot, every single blemish, and gives us the ability or redeems us to the Father so that we can have eternal life and be forgiven of all our sins. Um, and, and that's why the biography of Abraham is so important um, because, um, well, it's the beginning of redemption. Uh, and this man, you know, God took him as an old man. For a hundred years, God worked through him uh, to bring about um, Isaac, Jacob, the, the 12 nations, the 12 tribes, um, and, um, and Jesus Christ. So that's the biography of Abraham. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.